Stanford. He's ready for the vault. Gary's a very powerful vaulter. Okay. Now that's a handspring front with a half in a laid out position. He, he had to bend his knees a little bit. And he looks like his ankles are a little bit sore. Rough day for Stanford. Smith got a 9-5 on that vault. And when you look at Stanford, they really don't have the horses that Nebraska has and that ASU has. Witness Dan Hayden here on the bars. You know, maybe the only guy better than Dennis Hayden on the parallel bars is his twin brother, Dan. Look at the giant swing. Nice extension. Whoop. That's a tenth of a point for moving your hand. But then he gets back into the rhythm of the exercise. A tight studs. Look at that. Back toss right to the handstand. And again, two in a roll. That's good stuff. Drop. Peach straddle cut. That's going to cost him a couple of tenths for catching his leg there. Straight arm, straight body, press the handstand. And a tuck double back. Okay, he stuck the landing. He'll still score pretty well, even though he had a couple of little bobbles. You mentioned those couple of little bobbles. Let's go back and take a look at one of them. To tell you the truth, I don't know exactly why he does this skill. He has such a great exercise going. He does a drop peach to a straddle cut, and you can see he catches his leg as he's straddling around. That's going to cost two, maybe three tenths. Beneath his usual standard, but still a 9-6 for Dan Hayden from ASU. And now let's go over to the high bar. That's where Nebraska is getting ready, and their star, their stud, Wes Suter. You see his average today, 9.6. Wes is great on the high bar because, like Neil Palmer, he's very long and lean. He looks good up there. Notice the great position. There's a one-arm giant swing. Two in a row to a perfect finger. There's a blind change. Stoop into inverted giants. Okay, the middle section of this exercise is not that good. The first part was great, and the dismount is excellent. Nicely out double back. It's still gonna score very well. Many compare Wes Suter to Jimmy Hartung at this point in their careers. You see Hartung in the background there. And let's take a look at Suter as he does that high bar routine again. Look at the speed that he's generating on these giant swings. He lets go. Look at the nice line, beautiful position in the air. That's a tough dismount. And that is a fine routine. And you hear the crowd in the background. They appreciate it. And there's a the score, 9.8. West Suter and the Cornhuskers doing business at home. So with one rotation remaining, Nebraska has a commanding lead. Hey. Rotations, Nebraska headed to the vault, has a big lead. Arizona State needs inspiration on the high bar. And Bart Connor, does Arizona State have any chance at all? Well, I tell you, they have the guns on high bar. They got some great performers there, but I think Nebraska has a big enough lead, even a mediocre performance on the vault. They'll be all right. And this is Neil Palmer, and that's exactly what Nebraska's been up until this point, mediocre at best. That's definitely the best vault that they've shown today so far. All of their scores have been low nines. Neil does a one-armed layout, Sukahara. Just like John Sweeney from Arizona State, but not quite the same amplitude. It'll score reasonably well, though. And you heard the boost from the crowd. They didn't like the 9-3-5 that Palmer received for that vault in this last rotation. You know, last year at these championships in this very arena, on this very event, in the qualifying round, Dennis Hayden tore his knee apart. Last year, um, I injured my leg here at the NC2As. Uh, I tore the anterior cruciate, and I had some cartilage damage. Um, uh, if over the past year, I've been going through some extensive rehabilitation, and um, it's going very well. I chose not to get the uh, reconstruction done because uh, the tear in the uh, ligament, but um, I think it was the right decision. I think the recovery time that I, I would have had to take with the operation would have been too long. His alternative? Rehabilitation and a high-tech knee brace. This is my anterior cruciate right now because um, what the anterior cruciate does 
is it holds the bone from sliding forward. And this is what the brace is do does right now. Um, what it does is you've got the cable system here and the condyle pads, and it also only weighs a pound, so it's great for my sport. Dennis Hayden doing well battling the demons who haunt any athlete after serious injury. Here he is getting ready for the high bar. And you have to know that let this mount is going through his mind right now. Nice work on the overgrip stalders. Those are very difficult to do. And what a time for it to be going through his mind. Arizona State needs a good performance here to catch Nebraska. Look at that. Very aggressive on two reverse hex in a row. That's one thing great about Dennis. He doesn't hold back at all. Beautiful stalder work. Scoop right to the top on these inverted giant swings. What a long exercise. He must have done 15 tricks. That was an in-bar stalder. He's winding up for the dismount. Okay. He sticks a tuck double back dismount. Now, that's not as difficult of a dismount as he's used in the past. It was a little safer, but I think a smart decision considering his injury. Good clean form. He kicks right out, spots the landing, and a good landing. He'll be able to do a more difficult dismount in time, but for now, that's a great one. 9-8, look at that, a 9-8 Arizona State not giving an inch. What looked like the insurmountable is now down to the possible. But still, West Suter can clinch it for Nebraska with a 9-4 vault. ASU is keeping the heat on these guys, but a 9-4, no problem for West. I don't expect he'll have any problem with this vault. It's a one-arm handspring. Oh, okay. That's going to hurt them a lot. As a one-arm handspring pike front, it's not a very difficult vault, a little risky because he did it off of one arm. But what happened? Is it pressure? Is it the vault itself? Is it difficulty? What is it? Maybe they let down a little bit. They had such a lead going into this event, he doesn't even look like it worried him too much. Like, still, we got the lead. And you mentioned it, Arizona State putting the pressure on. Everything looks pretty good right here. Pretty good push. Just not enough rotation. He opened up too early. Nothing you can do in that position. And his score, an 8.95. West Suter was expected to deliver the knockout blow. He didn't do it. Arizona State has the door open, and they have Dan Hayden up on the high bar. He needs a 9.85 to win it for ASU. I can't believe, after the lead that Nebraska had in this event, that it's actually coming down to here. If Dan Hayden can nail his routine, and I tell you, this guy's got an outstanding routine. He's the kind of guy who can deliver your 985, no problem. He was the high bar champion last year, so this is his event. Hey, if he's gonna do it, we're gonna know right off the bat. Here he's gonna do a double back over the bar. There it is. Oh, perfect. I've never seen him do it any better. Perfect position on the regrasp. Are we talking a 985? He's got it in him. I tell you, he got past the hard part. The exercise is right on. We're gonna need a stick dismount, though, if he's gonna get that big score. There it is, a double over the bar with a full twist. Okay, a hop on the landing. It's gonna be close, but I think he might be able to do it. Remember, he needs a 9.85 for Arizona State to win their first ever national championship. Watch this double over the bar. Talking about pressure, I've never seen him do it better. There he goes over the bar. He's trying to spot the bar. He catches and extends perfectly straight before he swings to the bottom. And there's a score, a 9.9. Hayden has done it. Arizona State passes Nebraska. Arizona State celebrating. Nebraska is in shock. I still can't believe they threw that lead away. I have never seen a team going into the last event with a 1.45 lead lose it. But two things actually happened. Nebraska faltered a little bit, and Arizona State was awesome. Awesome indeed. We'll be back with the official results in a moment. Look what happened. We thought Arizona State had won the championship, but because of the new inquiry rule, which allows coaches to question scores, ASU got an extra .05. Nebraska, an additional .15. So the teams are dead even. And Nebraska still has three inquiries pending. So it's been a roller coaster of emotion for ASU, who thought they had won their first ever championship. For Nebraska, it could mean new life. Bart Connor is with Francis Allen. Francis, uh, this is the first year they've allowed the protest rule. How do you feel about that? 
Well, I don't know. Uh, we didn't want to use the inquiry rule. It came down to horizontal bar. We found out. We were checking our scores, and it doesn't jive up. Something's wrong. Our, our three kids did D moves. They weren't getting credit for them. So we put in an inquiry. Uh, the inquiry's written out the kid, his score, his routine. We turn it in. They look, and they said, no, there's no D move. We go, yeah, there's a D move. It's in the book. So we have to go get them the book so they can look in it. Okay, and so it the judges the are book. looking through the book right now. They looked at the book. It's in the book. Three of our kids did the same move. They said two of them did and one of them didn't. Now, if you win these three protests, do you win the meet? Yes. But if we lose one of them, I don't know if we tie. I don't, I don't know. At this point in time, we don't know. While the judges continue to confer, Bart is with ASU's Don Robinson. Coach, this is very intense. What's going on? I'm not really sure. There's a lot of protests. The meet is so close that nobody can make up their mind what they should do, and it bothers me quite a bit because I'm right in the middle of the controversy. Uh, right now, we're waiting for five hundredths of a point or something like that. We don't even know. I've been there at that point zero five before, and I don't like it. <laughs> Arizona State keeping their spirits high. Meanwhile, Nebraska showing guarded optimism. And to further complicate the situation, Nebraska is over the allowed three inquiry limit. A fourth, if disallowed, would cost Nebraska a three-tenths deduction. Right now, it looks like there's some activity over at the scorer's table. I'm sorry, Francis. I understand. Okay, we have gone back to the official three times, Francis. The officials will not change their viewpoint. Okay, I do not intend to go back to the officials again. Is that, okay. your, is that your rule, that NCAA rule? That is my decision. Okay? I'm not going to go back to the officials a third time. So you're costing to me a national championship, but that is the case. I That's have gone you. to the officials three times, Francis. With me? I, you, don't, you don't have that opportunity, Francis. No, I said, you chose the meet three times? Francis, we did go to We went to the officials three different yeah. times. See, all I'm saying is my gymnastics tells me that if they miss that one, they miss this one too. Okay. And we asked the officials that. And they said no. And they didn't even count that one out. They missed three in a row. These are your I'm sorry. But there's nothing I can do about that. We've gone back to the officials. I've gone to the... I've gone to the, the it appears Nebraska's judge. inquiries have been denied, so they will be penalized three-tenths of a point. And that will cost them their share of first place. If you just ask for a light beer... Give me a light. You never know what you'll get. The state awaiting the official verdict. Nebraska may already know it. The second place team with a score of 283.60. The University of Nebraska. Now it's finally official. Arizona State has won the national championship the first time in ASU history. Now let's recap exactly what happened. Nebraska filed four inquiries. With three of those still pending, Nebraska and Arizona State were tied for first. Under the rules, the team is allowed three inquiries. Any inquiry disallowed after that is a three-tenths deduction. That's what happened to Nebraska. All of their pending inquiries were denied, and that cost them their share of first place. Now this is the controversial fifth rotation. This is Kevin Davis, right here at the beginning of his exercise, that Stalder pirouette is supposedly a D move. Now, Francis Allen claimed that Kevin did it well enough to get credit for the D move. The judges missed it. A D move being more difficult, thereby deserving more points. Absolutely, so they filed an inquiry. The judges awarded him more points and raised his score from a 9.25 to a 9.4. So they upheld the inquiry. So they agreed with Francis Allen on this routine. That's right, Kevin Davis. Now, the next performer is Tom Schlesinger. He does an exercise with a similar skill, in fact, one that's even more difficult than the one that Kevin Davis used, right there, a stalder to a pirouette, which is supposedly D category, and the judges did not award him the D level move for that particular skill. So in that case, the inquiry was denied. Was it indeed a D move, or is it a matter of interpretation? It is a D move, but apparently the judges said they gave him the D move, and yet they made other execution deductions in the exercise to justify the score. 
Terry Gillespie in the same situation as Schlesinger had his inquiry denied.